So I am finally coming to you all with a med school application update. So the day that AMCAS opened to start allowing people to input information, I think it was May 3rd or some, sometime towards the beginning of the month, um, might have even been the end of April. I honestly don't know. There is time is not real. <laughs> but that night I put in all of the sort of like basic tedious things. So the identifying information, schools attended, biographic information, and then I also went through the tedious task of doing my coursework and putting that all in. So let me show you all what that looks like. Okay, so you can see here they're categorized by school and then you individually have to put in every single grade and categorize them into, you know, whatever you think they should be. Um, so like other business, computer, or um, I have them all listed as other right now. So that's pretty much wrong <laughs> to list them all as others. So I do still need to go through all of these and basically just um, make sure that the course classification is correct on everything and make sure that, you know, just double check that everything's correct just so I don't have any delays in my processing. But otherwise, I also today got to put in my letters of evaluation. For the most part, I am using the letters packet service through my undergrad. I've talked about this in some videos before, but basically um, letters packet service just compiles a bunch of other like individual letters from individual professors, compiles them all together, and then usually has some type of like cover letter at the beginning. And what's really cool about my undergrad letter packet service is that they also let you include an autobiography. So I get to include a little bit more detailed information just sort of like about my life in general and like who I am as a person in addition to the personal statement that you normally get to include. And so your personal statement is like why do you want to be a doctor? Why medicine? All that. And then the autobiography that I get to include through my undergrad letter packet service is sort of like, who are you? And um, what has your, your journey been like, kind of? So um, slightly different, but like gets, you know, lets the admissions committee see a little bit more of who I am as a person, um, that kind of thing. So that's really nice. So that contains the five basic letters. So two science, one non-science professors, and then two additional. So my two additional, I have um, a faculty member from Mailman that I did research with uh, during my MPH. And then I also have my program director from my bioethics program. Now, some schools will let you submit more than five letters, and so for those schools, I'm also including a sixth letter, which is an individual letter, and that one is a doctor that I know through AMWA, through the American Medical Women's Association, that I've also done research with and sort of worked with, um, worked alongside of when I was in leadership positions and things like that. So for the schools that will allow more than five letters, I will also include her letter. So basically the way that it is set up is you can choose which letters go to which schools in your applications. So for every school that I apply to, they're going to get my UCF letters packet. And then for some of the schools that will allow more than five, then they will also get my sixth letter from my AMWA contact. So I have input all of that letters of evaluation info in there today. I was just waiting on some like uh, confirmation on preferred contact information from my AMWA contact, but now that is all input and I am just waiting on my letter writers obviously to finish writing their letters and submitting them and then I need to write my autobiography in addition to finalizing slash potentially rewriting my personal statements but otherwise that's we're we're moving right along I have my work and activities left and I also have 
obviously the med school designations, essays, standardized tests. So that's what's left on my application. Now, the other day I went through with my pre-med advisor and we went through all of my work and activities and basically did some strategic grouping and lumping um, so that I could have a nice, um, you know, 15. So you have a maximum of 15 activities you can list in your work and activities section. Three of them get to be designated as most meaningful. So we kind of worked through that together, decided what we thought should be my most meaningful and, um, you know, sort of strategized which ones made sense to group together so that I could get down to 15 because, after a while, you eventually sometimes have more than 15 things. So yeah, that is all done. I just have to write up all the descriptions and get them all input and all of that. So if you are at the beginning of this process, let me just give you a tip that you should try your hardest to log your hours that you do extracurricular activities. So I did this for some period of time, but not for the entire time. And so then I was left just sort of, es- like, um, I don't want to say, I, I guess estimating, um, you know, sort of how many hours I had spent on certain things. So like, for instance, I knew that I put in at least 10 hours a week for X number of years to my research in undergrad. And so I could just sort of calculate out, you know, 10 hours times 16 weeks in a semester times X number of semesters, and then, you know, get this large number and then sort of, you know, think about conferences that I had attended or presentations and estimated how many hours I had put in for those types of things, added that in, but it gets complicated. So it is so much easier if you just log it from the beginning, start an Excel sheet and get that all logged with the dates. And then you also know what your start date and what your end date was on everything. So that is my, one of my biggest tips because I have had to estimate a decent number of things. Um, like I said, I did log some of them. So some of them are exact numbers, but, um, others are honestly probably underestimations, <laughs> um, just to be on the safe side. But yeah, I have to now go through and put in all those work and activities, but that will be probably for another time. So I just wanted to give you an update since I had finished my letters of evaluation section. So latest update in the uh, applying to medical school saga. Um, I am sitting down before work today because I had some ideas about personal statement writing. So I'm going to jot those down and hope that they turn into something good because as of right now, I, um, I'm not super happy with what I've written. Like if I have to, I can submit it. Um, and I got feedback from, um, someone in my undergrad who reviews personal statements, like professionally. So, um, you know, I could incorporate her comments and then, you know, whatever. But, um, yeah. I also figured that while I was on this page of AMCAS, I would show you what it looks like from the sort of applicant uh, perspective. So honestly, it's not much, <laughs> but you see, can see it just says, use the space provided to explain why you want to go to medical school. And then they have a little warning saying that uh, this is important as if we didn't already know. And you have 5,300 characters. Uh, so, and let's see if we type in here, yeah, spaces count as characters. So, not a lot of room. <laughs> Just a chill night writing descriptions for my AMCAS activities. So, some application updates. <laughs> um, when it comes to my experience descriptions that I was writing last time I think I checked in, um, I have written all of them now. 
Um, all 15 experience descriptions, 700 characters each. The only thing left is I have my three most meaningful experiences that I have yet to write the like additional piece of text that you get for something being most meaningful. So you get 1325, 1325 characters for that most meaningful um, section. So I have to write those. That's my goal for tonight. Otherwise, the personal statement saga. So I wrote a first draft of my personal statement, sent it off to the like writing coach, reviewer, whatever you want to call her um, at my undergrad's pre-health advising office. She sent it back with a bunch of comments. I rewrote the entire thing, sent it back to her. She again wrote back with a bunch of comments, but this time I was like feeling like I was struggling with her comments a lot. Like I was feeling really discouraged or uh, something. I don't know. I just kind of felt like she was looking for like a specific thing that like all other personal statements like are structured a certain way or like look a certain way and she was trying to like make mine look that way too and I was just kind of like yeah but I like that's kind of the point like I'm trying to make it something different so I sent it off to um, I made some of the edits that she suggested, but some of the like really big like content type edits, I was like, eh. and so I sent it off to the director of my bioethics program who had once offered to read my personal statement for me. So I sent it off to her. She made some suggestions, looped in the writing coach from Harvard Med. She made some suggestions. I integrated all of those, sent that back to the both of them. They both said it looked good. I have had it read by um, a friend of mine who just graduated med school and um, who actually has a, a planner YouTube channel. So I will try to link her channel up somewhere so that you all can find her and watch all of her videos on her um, on planning and that kind of thing if you're into that. Um, had her read it and had obviously um, Tim read it and everyone says it looks good so I have copied it into the AMCAS portal and obviously my application, well not obviously, but my application is not submitted yet so I could still make edits but I think it's pretty much at a place where I guess I'm okay submitting it because everyone has told me to be okay submitting it. So yeah, that is pretty much it. I just got a notification today that my um, transcript, my last transcript was received. The only transcript I was waiting on was my Harvard Med one. They like physically snail mail um, transcripts. So that's why I was waiting on that one for so long. And now both of my letters are received. So when I say both, um, the way that it's input into AMCAS is I have one individual letter for schools that accept more than five, but for schools that accept five and less, I'm submitting a letters packet, which I've talked a lot about before. And so that just comes in as like one letter as far as AMCAS is concerned. So all my letter writers submitted their letters to my letters packet. My individual letter writer submitted her letter into AMCAS. And I finally felt uh, just had to bite the bullet and hit submit on my um, three page autobiography that I got to submit along with my letters packet. So that is submitted. Basically, I've been doing a lot of writing just like randomly in the middle of doing other things. So I have just been writing and rewriting and editing and re-editing back and forth um, at night pretty much like while I'm in virtual shadowing or like, you know, before dinner or whatever. So it's pretty much there. I think literally the only thing left is those most meaningful experiences, which I'm going to try to do tonight. And then the, um, 
I want to double check all of my grades and make sure that I have input them with the right class classifications. AMCAS has a page that breaks down for you what types of classes go under what types of classifications. So I'm just gonna like side reference, like double check against that. And that's pretty much it. I The other big thing that I did the other day, um, this again, I did while I was just like watching TV, I just sort of mindlessly entered all of the schools that I plan to apply to. So I think a while ago I talked about making a draft list of schools to go over with my pre-med advisor from my undergrad and we did that and she said basically that everything looked good and <laughs> I honestly didn't change too much. Um, I can show you what the school list that I came up with though, what is, because I organized them and like pulled certain information from MSAR. So basically, all right, let's see. So I have schools classified as <laughs> vanity schools, AKA schools that I'm probably, you know, don't have a super great chance of getting in. And then I have all of these other schools from here to here that are pretty much like my bread and butter. I have a couple maybes down here and then I have some probably nots. I have a whole nother tab of schools that I just eliminated flat out. And so I eliminate them for like a lot of different reasons. Um, sometimes if they, let's see, let's go back over here. Um, if they took, you know, all or most in-state um, students and I am not was not a resident of that state then I eliminated them because I just have a really low chance. I highlighted when the in-state acceptance rate was high for a Florida school since I am applying as a Florida resident and flagged some schools that have high percentages of other states but that I'm hoping I can show I have a connection to and so maybe I could be in that small percent like the University of Massachusetts. I'm living in Massachusetts now so you know hopefully and also took down how many letters they would accept just for that logistical type of thing. So that is pretty much how I organized and I basically pulled out every single school on the north like in the eastern like time zone eastern seaboard and my AMCAS is pretty much uh, ready to go so all that is completed and that's kind of crazy honestly so it's gonna happen soon <laughs> all right I have certified and agreed to all 1600 things. <laughs> uh, I don't wanna. <laughs>